In today's exploration of cybersecurity tech news, the war in Ukraine is heating up and so are the battles in cyberspace. In this video, I'll be covering everything that's happened in the last day or two in the world of cyber warfare when it comes to the invasion of Ukraine. Firstly, Anonymous has hacked the Russian Ministry of Defense and leaked some data. The leak contains a database of phone numbers, emails, and passwords belonging to Russian military officials. Many of the hacked emails end in mil.ru or gov.ru. In other words, these can only belong to the Russian military and government. Now, I'm not gonna show any of the leaked data in this video because I'm pretty sure that's against YouTube's community guidelines. In fact, shortly after an anonymous related account tweeted it, Twitter pulled it down and the mega download link was taken completely offline. But despite that, the leak will have already done its job. The Russian Ministry of Defense will have locked down accounts, and whilst it won't take them long to recover from this, the whole idea will have been to create as much disruption as possible to the Russian military's operations. But Anonymous did not stop there. Things got a whole lot more interesting in a different operation, which also has happened only in the last day or so. A group calling themselves Anonymous Liberland teamed up with a hacking group going by the name Pwn Bar Hack Team. They hacked into the Belarusian's weapons manufacturer, Tetrada, or however it's pronounced. Anyway, this company makes weapons for the Russian military, and they're said to have been instrumental in providing logistical support for Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Now, the hackers have released a statement in which they mock Russian threat groups, saying, Our Russian APT friends seem kind of out of shape, don't they? Defacements, DDoS attacks, what year is this, 2012? We thought maybe they needed a little reminder of what real hacking is like. And so, after hacking the weapons manufacturer, they leaked 200 gigabytes of emails. They claim included are the schematics for some of those SAMs. Here, they're referring to surface-to-air missile systems, like this one, made by Tetrada. But how did this duo gain access? Apparently through a Microsoft Exchange vulnerability, proxy logon. This allows an attacker to bypass authentication to a Microsoft Exchange email server and gain admin privileges. A patch for this was released a year ago, but it seems Tetrada just never bothered to update their systems. The defense company's website is now offline, and the leak is being disseminated through Distributed Denial of Secrets, an organization which hosts data leaks. It's too soon to say what effects this leak will have, as 200 gigabytes is a lot of emails, so it'll take a good while for people to go through it all. Next up, in the last day or so, the cybercriminal underworld has started taking sides in this war. The Conti cybercrime group has declared full support of the Russian government. If you're not familiar, Conti is one of the world's most prolific and dangerous ransomware gangs. One of their most famous hacks took place in May of last year, when they absolutely crippled Ireland's healthcare system with ransomware. Conti released a statement on their dark web blog saying they're announcing full support of the Russian government. If anyone decides to organize a cyber attack or any war activities against Russia, we will use all possible resources to strike back at the critical infrastructure of the enemy. This kind of language is unheard of when it comes to cyber criminals. Some people have interpreted their statement as proof that they're working with, or at least supported by the Russian government. Though, there is a more nuanced perspective. For the last few years, Russian cybercriminals have, for the most part, been left alone by Russian authorities to do their thing. But after the Revel ransomware gang was arrested by Russian Secret Service just a few weeks ago, the whole Russian cybercriminal community has been worrying about Putin finally cracking down on them. And so, Conti's statement of support for the Putin regime may just be a cynical attempt to cozy up to Putin, hoping that if they pledge allegiance to him, then maybe he'll just leave them alone to do their ransoming. However, there is a twist. Conti changed their statement only an hour after posting it, switching their position to, we do not ally with any government and we condemn the ongoing war, but they keep their threat of using their full capacity to deliver retaliatory measures in case the Western warmongers attempt to target critical infrastructure in Russia. So why the change of heart? It's possible Conti realized whilst they were minimizing their risk from Russian authorities, they were really making themselves a target for others. As this meme I found on Twitter eloquently illustrates. Or perhaps Conti just didn't realize that cyber criminals are actually quite divided on this and that they would rather not make enemies within their own community. For example, Raid Forums, a popular cyber criminal forum, has apparently imposed restrictions on Russian users. An admin posted, any user found to be connecting from Russia will be banned. This is not a joke. Raid Forums is an English-speaking forum, but no doubt a good chunk of their users will be based in Russia, so this is a surprising move. Another Raid Forums user made it very clear whose side they're on by posting a data dump of emails and hashed passwords belonging to the FSB.ru domain. The FSB is essentially the Russian version of the FBI. 
And as I mentioned in my previous video, the Ukrainian military is openly reaching out to Ukrainian cyber criminals, encouraging them to put their skills to good use and volunteer for the military cyber units. They have a Google Forms page for people to apply through, and it shows they're looking for people with skills such as social engineering, red teaming, and threat intelligence. And Ukraine could use greater defensive cyber capabilities. For example, the Belarusian state hacking group UNC-1151 has been targeting Ukrainian military personnel with phishing campaigns. Soldiers have been receiving emails saying, click the link below and verify your contact information, otherwise your account will be irretrievably deleted. The email is then linked to a page for people to type in their username and password. Now, this is obvious BS, merely an attempt to scoop up email credentials of people in the Ukrainian military. Why? Well, the Belarusians won't be looking for anything in particular, but rather to see what they can learn from soldiers' messages, such as insights into Ukrainian military strategy and how or where they're being deployed. Speaking of spam, and this is kind of shocking, but I suppose it shouldn't be surprising. Scammers have been exploiting the invasion and setting up fake donation pages, attempting to trick people into sending them money, with the cover story that the money will go to help people in Ukraine. So if you are looking to donate money, be careful. The official Ukraine Twitter account tweeted that they're now accepting donations in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and at first people assumed that the account had just been hacked. But no, this is legit. So far, millions have been donated. So this is what we know so far when it comes to the Ukrainian cyber warfare situation. Also, several hacktivist groups have contacted me, both pro-Russians and pro-Ukrainians, and it looks like I'm actually going to be doing interviews with them. I'm taking suggestions for questions to ask them over on my Instagram story, which I will link in the video description. Staying secure online should be number one, but convenience is important too. That's why I've teamed up with Roboform who are sponsoring this video. Roboform's password manager keeps your password synced across all your devices ready for when you need them. It even works on Linux. And only you hold the decryption key, so your plain text passwords never touch Roboform servers. I've personally been using Roboform every day for the past six months because I think they strike the right balance between security and convenience. Use the link in the description now to get Roboform for only a little over a dollar a month and get 30% off only when you use the link below. And if you decide Roboform isn't for you, they have a 30 day no questions asked refund policy. As always, thank you for watching, and if you find these updates on the Ukrainian cyber warfare situation useful, make sure to tickle the notification bell so you get the updates as soon as they go live, and follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes content, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.